My testimony was very upsetting for the commission uh, for the simple reason that uh, number one, I talk about explosions in the building, initial explosions before the plane hit the building. I, I spoke about uh, seeing one of the hijackers, uh, alleged hijackers, uh, uh, three months before 9-11. Um, I told them that I had uh, told the FBI this information and uh, I kept quiet for two and a half years thinking that there was an, an investigation, a formal investigation by the FBI and then I realized it was just not going anywhere. There was nothing being done by uh, this investigation, uh, not talking about the 9-11 Commission, but the FBI uh, investigation itself. William Rodriguez was a maintenance worker for the World Trade Center for 20 years, and he's traveled the world telling the story about what happened to him on that horrible day. His testimony is one of the most heart-wrenching and emotional that you will ever hear. It is his testimony that was deleted from the 9-11 Commission report. Here's one of the reasons why. Very strong. Boom! An explosion so hard that pushes us upwards. Upwards. And at that moment, I thought it was the mechanical room where they have all the pumps and the generators for the building that maybe a generator just blew up on the basement. Now, 20 years in the building, you know something that comes from the bottom and something that comes from the top. And when I went to verbalize that it was a generator, we hear, boom, all the way on the top, the impact of the plane on the top. Two different events, two different times, his testimony of an explosion below him just seconds before the plane hit in the upper floors would obviously destroy the official story of a simple hijacking. But the mainstream media has no interest in telling his story honestly. He was interviewed on September 11th of 2006 in New York City. And listen carefully as to how WABC-TV edited his story to make it sound as though he was describing the sound of the plane and not a basement explosion. Rodriguez worked at the North Tower. He was a custodian responsible for cleaning the stairwell. On the morning of 9-11, he was in the basement. We hear, boom! An explosion so loud that puts us upwards on the air. And we started screaming. We didn't know what it was. It was the first hijacked plane that hit the tower. Is it possible that WABC and other network affiliates were working from a script on the morning of September 11, 2001? Let's take a look at some of the other video clips from other media outlets. And these were shot as the events unfolded that morning, long before any scripts could have been handed out. Tell me where you were, what happened, what did you okay. see, what did you hear? First I went on Canal Street, I saw the fire. I saw the two buildings, I'm thinking it was a, it was a bomb because it's two of them. Uh, again, there has been a second explosion uh, here in uh, Manhattan. We understand now there has been a secondary explosion on Tower 2. There was another major explosion. The, build, the building itself, literally the top of it, came down, sending smoke and debris everywhere. We're being pushed out as well because there was some concern that there might be additional explosions, possibly other bombs. I need you to stop for a second. There has just been a huge explosion. And then the entire top of the building just blew up. We heard a very loud blast of explosion. We looked up and the uh, building literally began to collapse before us. It just went ba boom, it was like a bomb went off. And it was like, it was like holy hell coming down them stairs. And then when we go, we got, finally got to the bottom, they were coming out on a, a mezzanine level there. And another explosion came out right from it, just everyone flying right in front of me. Everything just went boom. Tell you I'm okay, all right? Here, hold on. You wanna call, you, you wanna call your mother or something? They could very well have set off, uh, uh, set charges within the World Trade Center. And of course it went down just like many of the buildings that we've seen on uh, CNN or Fox TV, the, the, the Bush Stadium in St. Louis or, or one of the famous uh, hotels out in Las Vegas. It just crumbles, it just, it just implodes and it, and it falls in on upon itself. And, and that's really, I remember on that particular day, watching that on the TV monitor and saying to myself, hey, uh, th that, that looks really strange the way it's coming down. Uh, I, I don't think it's necessarily from the, from the plane and the fire from the plane that's doing this. It almost looks, it almost looks like one of those implosions of buildings that you see, except there is nothing controlled about this. 
We made it outside. We made it about a block. We made it at least two blocks, and we started running. Floor by floor, it started popping out. It was like, it was if, if, if they had detonated. Yeah, yeah detonated. They were planning to yeah. take down a building. Boom, 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 boom. All the way down. I was watching it and running. I was making my way to the foot of the World Trade Center suddenly while talking to an officer who was questioning me about my press credentials. We heard a very loud blast and explosion. We looked up and the uh, building literally began to collapse before us. And then the entire top of the building just blew up and splinters of debris are falling on the street. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God. Oh my God. When I began to look at the destruction of the World Trade Center and especially the Twin Towers, it was astonishing to me how obvious the evidence was that the government account couldn't possibly be correct. Of course, the government maintains that the buildings came down as a result of the impact of jet aircraft resulting jet fuel fires, which weakened or melted the steel and led to a pancake collapse. That's indefensible on every count. The buildings were designed to withstand the impact of the then largest commercial airliners, which were Boeing 707s, very similar in their size and mass and, and fuel capacity to the 767s that actually hit the building. Most of the fuel from these planes burned up in spectacular fireballs. The fires that resulted were relatively modest. The melting point of steel turns out to be 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit, the highest temperature you can acquire with a jet fuel-based fire which is principally kerosene, incidentally, is a thousand degrees lower under ideal circumstances. The billowing black clouds indicated these were oxygen-starved or deprived fires that were burning much lower temperatures. In fact, the estimates on all sides are those fires were only running about 500 degrees Fahrenheit, much too low, obviously, for the steel to have melted or even to have weakened since Underwriters Laboratory had certified the steel up to 2,000 degrees for three to four hours. The fire in the South Tower burned only around an hour in the North, an hour and a half. So the fires were too low and too brief in duration to have caused the steel to even weaken. If the steel had weakened, there would have been asymmetrical sagging, it would have been gradual, and you wouldn't have had enough dynamic energy to cause a collapse in any case. The whole theory of a pancake collapse is a physical impossibility. The molten metal in the basements of all three buildings, right? And yet, uh, all scientists now uh, uh, reasonably uh, agree that the fires were not sufficiently hot to melt the steel. So, what is this molten metal? It's a direct evidence for the use of uh, high-temperature explosives, such as thermite. Thermite produces uh, molten iron as a, as an end product. Okay. We appreciate your coming on, even okay. if I don't understand oh. your theories. Oh, uh, we okay. appreciate you trying to explain them. Thanks. These core columns were discovered after the collapse. The angled cut occurs in exactly the manner that shaped charges slice through steel beams to control the way they fall. Notice the hardened once liquid metal. Was thermite used with the shape charge? The way we do this is by cutting the beam at an angle which, through a series of beams cut at the same angle, will tend to make the building shift over and walk. 